So welcome to After the 90. We're here with uh, Fern Schwaros, hope I pronounced that correctly, uh, CEO, and Pal Oros, did I yeah. pronounce that correctly? Yeah. <laughs> um, I just want to start off with um, a bit of the history of the club. So um, Fern Schwaros, the biggest club in Hungary, yes. um, as you stated earlier on, but how were they formed uh, as a as a, as a base for a football club? Yeah, it was, it was founded in 1899, so it means that this is our 120th anniversary this season, which is very big pride for us. Uh, as you said, it's the biggest and the most successful football club in Hungary. Uh, we have 10 million people living in Hungary, and out of these 10 million people, according to the last researches, 2 million support fans, which is like 20% of the population, which is a huge number. And um, it was founded by several people, different people, Hungarian people, Jewish people, yeah. German people. So it was really a mixture of everything. Kind of a multicultural yeah, yeah, collective. Yeah, yeah. That's good. And uh, and and yeah, this is this is the way it, way it started, and uh, we've been we've been doing quite well ever since that. <laughs> I can say that, as I said, this yeah. season we won the thirtieth title, which makes us the record champions in Hungary. The second one, I think, has twenty one. <laughs> so actually, we we have a big advantage in this as well. Uh, yeah, that's it. And for the for the you spoke about the the thirtieth title and the hundred and twentieth anniversary. You mentioned earlier that must be a really, really significant bonus to have both at the, yeah, the same yeah. time for next season. Yeah, this is why we were really concentrating so much on the championship title, mm -hmm. you know, because this is something which was very important for the supporters, very important for for the club. Mm -hmm. This is a once in a lifetime occasion when you have an, an anniversary like this and, and, and you win the championship. And we won with quite a big advantage, 13 points in front of the second one. But this is not the biggest, biggest <laughs> because two years ago, not three years ago, we won the 21, 21 points advantage in front wow. of the second one, which was a Hungarian record of all time. It never happened before. Well, that's another, <laughs> yeah, another yeah, thing you cannot yeah. jump. Um, the club's motto is obviously morality, strength and consensus. Yeah. Um, and what does it mean and, and how important is it to the club and the fans, this, this motto? Yeah, I think it's very speak? important. And, uh, and as I said, uh, yeah, two million people support our club. And this is not only an opportunity for us, but it's responsibility as well. So we have to set an example and uh, we act this way. And the, the, the supporters understand it and, and, and really I can say like it because we do a lot of CSR activities, which is, which is of key importance in the life of the club. Uh, all the, 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 as I said, this is not only a football club because we have like 20 different uh, sports yeah. in, 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 in the club. And all the athletes are involved in these CSR activities. And they really like it, so it's not like we have to catch them to come and, and uh, do it. But yeah. they, they come; they, they are volunteers for that. And uh, yeah, every month there's a different topic that we do. Sometimes uh, we, we we give food to the homeless people. Sometimes yeah. uh, we uh, choose another topic, and so on and so on. And then the the club focuses on this. And we we have we have um, some colleagues who who have a full time job doing this. Yeah. We visit schools, mm -hmm. which is which is very, very important. important. Yeah. Uh, on a weekly uh, basis, we wow. go to schools, and not only in Budapest, but uh, all, all around the country, and not only in the country, but even outside Hungary as well, because, you know, Hungary was much bigger before, yeah. and then a lot of Hungarian people live outside Hungary, so we go to schools uh, in Romania, in, in Croatia, and so on, and so on, where Hungarian people, uh, Hungarian um, young uh, guys go there. And then we tell them what Ferenc Aros is, what, what this, this, this is about. And always there's one football player and another uh, different from somebody from a different uh, kind of sport. I suppose that's a, a really good way of sustaining your support is obviously outreach to the community and, and you know, showing the people that you, you really care for yeah. the yeah, community yeah, yeah. and Hungarians okay. outside of Hungary. As yeah, you said, it's very it important as big. well. And, you yeah. know, Ferenc Aros was always the club of the resistance. Yeah. Even when there was communism here, mm -hmm. it was the club of the resistance. The communist regime was so afraid of the Ferenc Laros fans that they even changed the colors and the name. <laughs> so actually, yeah. uh, between 52 and 56, 56 was the year, year of the revolution, we had to play in red and white, okay. and the name was taken. It was not Ferenc Laros, it was called Kiniji. Okay. So it was incredible, you know, and then we got back our name and our colors in, in yeah. 56. So it was always the club of the resistance. Yeah. And for people living outside Hungary, it means being Hungarian. Yeah. You know, being hopeful. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, this is the, let's call it, it's not the national team, but the national <laughs> emotion team, yeah. you know, yeah. that, that uh, Carry, is, carries the weight of the, the country on its shoulders, correct. which is absolutely amazing. Obviously, we had a chance to have a chat 
uh, before the interview, but for the for the people watching, um, just to get to know you a little bit better, but how did you get involved with the club and, and how much does the club mean to you? Okay, so the club means uh, well, everything for me, I and mean, you can see that. <laughs> but, uh, no, uh, my father used to play here. He was a very, very famous player. Um, he was Olympic uh, bronze medalist, gold medalist, and, and he was member of the team which won the first Cities Cup, mm -hmm. uh, beating Juventus in the final in 65. The first Cities Cup which became UEFA Cup and now yep. it's called the Europa League. Mm -hmm different times <laughs> and uh, yeah he played here between as I said between 52 and 66 my 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 son is playing here in the under 19 actually wow. he's a central defender congratulations <laughs> thank That's you very much something to be really really proud and, yeah, yeah and myself I, I I my father was a very very good football player so it's very risky to become a football player when your father is so big you know so he told me it's very if you go to to the university and yeah. you study he was a coach uh, after he stopped playing he was a coach in, in Morocco in Casablanca so I went to school there first and then we came back to Hungary I went to school here in Budapest and I was really concentrating on business studies I have my own um, company which is uh, the biggest uh, let's put it this way yeah one of the biggest I think um, advertising and even marketing agencies in Hungary so actually this is what what I was doing and then uh, I got a call mm -hmm. it was in 2011 uh, from the president, actually yeah. Mr. Kubatov, we've known each other for a long time mm -hmm. and he called me and he said that there's a chance that we will take back the club from Mr. Kevin McCabe, buy it back and would you be interested <laughs> in, in, in being the CEO? I said, yeah, of course, this is my life and ever since that I've been here and uh, I have very good colleagues in my company so they are doing my job there. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, obviously you've got that family connection, that's something really Definitely. special to you. Definitely. Um, for, for my own interest, do you think your son would be interested in carrying on that, that yeah, lineage? Maybe, with yeah, that hope. Well, you know, I never, I don't even go to the games when he plays because <laughs> <laughs> I don't want people sad. But it's not yeah. easy for him, you know, when he yeah, plays no, good, of course, of when course. he plays good, yeah, yeah. they say, okay, this is normal because his grandfather was a fantastic <laughs> player. And when he plays bad, yeah. they said he's only here because of his father. So it's not easy for him. But no, he's now yeah. eight plus, past 18, so he can really cope with it. He goes to university. And, uh, and that's it. That's good. That's very, very good. Um, you, you touched on it there in, in 1965. You won the the Intercity Fair yeah. Cup. You, you beat Juventus one in the in one nil in the final. Final. Would you consider this to be the finest moment in the club's history? Well, it's a, it's it's maybe well talking about international success. It's the biggest moment. Yeah. But um, we have so many big moments. Yeah. You know, it was a big moment when we opened this new stadium mm -hmm. in 2014. It was a big moment when this season we won the 30th title, you know, so we always have big moments. Uh, that was a fantastic team at that time, you know, it was, football was very much different. It was not so much about business, it was about yeah. sports. <clears throat> we had fantastic players like Florian Albert and Fenn yeah. and so on and so on, you know, incredible guys. And uh, I'm very lucky, actually, because, as I said, my father played in that team. So I, I've known these guys personally ever since I was a kid, <laughs> you know, and it was really wow. something. I, I had no choice. I became a financial supporter when I was born. Yeah, you, <laughs> you, you know? came straight out and that was it. Yeah. That, was, that was your life. So I think, think yeah, yeah, 1965 was a, was a very big moment. 1967 was a big yeah. moment as well. And Mr. Florian Albert uh, won the, the gold ball. As That's the right. only Hungarian, as the only Hungarian player ever since, which yeah. is which is fantastic. We are very proud of. It. Yeah. I mean, you've, we've taken a look around the stadium, and even today, you've mentioned that the the stadium is um, the third home for the club. Yeah, is that correct? Um, we've had, you know, an amazing time being been taken around. Really appreciate it. Um, and did you did you find it really easy to kind of make this stadium as it is today? You know, up to, does it really need to be updated or? Anything like that quite often, or do you find the way you've made it now is quite modern and will stick out for, for yeah, quite a Yeah, I think while? it is. Uh, we made a lot of researches before mm -hmm. the construction of the stadium. So we did, my colleagues and, uh, and the constructor <clears throat> company, a Hungarian company, they traveled all around Europe, you know, mm -hmm. to check all the stadiums, different size stadiums, different characteristic stadiums, and we wanted to get the best practice from everyone. Yeah. And this is why, as I said, this stadium was constructed in 2014 and in 2015 it won the Stadium Business Awards in Barcelona. It was elected the best new venue of the season of the year. And we had um, competitors like San Francisco 49ers and so on. Yeah. So this is really, really a very, very well uh, 
thought about stadium, a yeah. well-made stadium, I think. And and uh, we are very lucky because you know there's an operator who mm-hmm. is doing all the all the jobs. Yeah. And he's, so you, he's you get to you get to enjoy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah actually, we gave them all the rights. They yeah. Have the ticketing right, and they have okay. everything, and they, yeah, yeah. they have to organize everything. So we just come here and play the game. Yeah. You you, you get to the you get to see. The results and enjoy the atmosphere. Yeah, and, yeah, you know, yeah. Normally, good. this is an event center in Budapest, so this yeah. is not only a stadium, but it is an event center. Some people call it the cash machine of business <laughs> because we have like a two-level parking yeah. uh, under the stadium. And uh, last season, they had more than two hundred and seventy events in the stadium, wow. which is not football-related yeah. events. I mean, conferences <clears throat> and uh, some concerts as well, like. At Robbie Williams, Depeche Mode. Mm-hmm. You know, so this is really an event center, but this is the home of Ferenc Varys, and this is this is the most important place for us. And it is uh, absolutely like I'll say it again. My mind's been blown uh, <laughs> coming around here and seeing what's what's in the stadium. And um, but just to to go back to yeah. um, you know how the clubs dealt with different things in recent times. The club you know has struggled a bit in European competitions, and how has this affected the club? And what factors would you attribute to this? Well, actually, uh, yeah, this is the only the only issue that we we had in the recent years that we couldn't really get to the group stage. And uh, when I when I when I give interviews, I always tell that okay, we have to get to the group stage every season because we have the background for that. We have the financial background, we have the infrastructural background, the the the, the sports background, <laughs> everything. And for some reason, it never 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 happened. We didn't succeed. And um, Four and a half years. We our coach was Thomas Doll, the ex German national team yeah. player, actually, and coach. So four and a half years, and then we decided uh, last season in the autumn to 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 change the coach because we said that we have to concentrate already on this season's uh, qualifications, you know, and, yeah. and find the, the the way to play teams and so on and so on. So we have a new coach now, Sergei Laprov, mm-hmm. actually the very famous uh, player. Played in England as well in Dinamo Kiev, you know, right, yeah. really, and he's a fantastic guy. He's a very, very tough person, to be honest. He's very, very hard person to deal with, <clears throat> but he knows what he wants to do. And um, you can see when you see the, the the team playing that everybody knows what he has to yeah. do. Everybody is, and he's a very strict guy. And and I think that we play differently now. We are very much focused on on defense, you know. And from defense we go on. So we are not <clears throat> that kind of team now, which plays in the front and then yeah. something happens in the back. But everything is starting from 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 defense and yeah, then, work your way uh, forward. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I know from from past clubs that. If a manager or a coach has a certain stature and has a certain uh, authority that it can make a club play, you know, yeah. with much more, well, not strict, mm-hmm. but with a m- bigger authority and it can have such a, a massive yeah. effect. Like you said, the you know, season just gone, you won your 30th title. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you need to have that grit, that determination yeah. and everything to, yeah. to achieve that. And th- this is one of the, the, the best things I, I love talking about. And I, I know you'll probably love it too. <laughs> uh, it was your biggest rivals are FC Uspest yeah. in, in Hungary. Uh, how intense is the rivalry between both clubs and how does it affect your city when the two of them come together? You know, I, this is the day every time we <laughs> play here. You know, and wow, uh, yeah, they are big rivals. We respect them a lot. We don't like them, but we respect them, <laughs> and uh, know that we, yeah. we have very, very good connection with the management. You know, and mm-hmm. but um, you know, you always have to respect your rival. They are they are big uh, tradition club, founded in eighteen eighty five, so actually even older than Fenerbahce. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they, they when they come here, it's like a fiesta for us, you know. And recently, we are very successful, always against the Budapest, yeah. so <clears throat> it's a it's a good day. But uh, yeah, we even played the cup final against them in the stadium. Yeah. We won. Um, yeah, this is a big rivalry. This is this goes back to history, and you know why? Because as I said, Ferenc Zaros was always the team of the resistance, yeah. and Budapest was the team of the the interior ministry. I mean, the yeah. police. You know, and this is yeah. why there was this big, big fight between yeah. the supporters all the time. Now it's, I mean, maybe they are fighting, but we don't see them <laughs> We're fighting. Yeah. So normally, uh, yeah, here in the stadium, it's very, very safe. Outside the stadium as well, the police always organizes the way they come here, the way they leave the stadium, and so there's no chance for anybody to, to yeah. even touch them. <clears throat> and uh, and these these are the games which have the best the best atmosphere. 
my yeah. first really, really are you are you happy to see the the political side of it being taken out because obviously as you said one was always the resistance one was always the yeah. the establishment you know there's yeah. that classic political clash but in recent games, have you noticed that that's kind of dissipated and it's become yeah, more it's about the passion yeah, of the fans? It was and... different times. It was yeah. different times. You know, this is very dated from the big rivalry. Now the big rivalry stayed, but I mean, without this politics. And that's good because a lot of clubs in, in Europe tend to keep that attachment to the political and, and religious yeah. aspect of it. And, you, yeah, you know, yeah. in my opinion, there's no place for it in, in football or sports. The totally rivalry right. should be about, you know, having a bit of banter with your friend, mm -hmm. with, you know, opposing side and building an atmosphere in the stadium and concentrating on the football. It's never, it should never be about politics or anything like that. But in 2006, the club were relegated for the first time in yeah. its history. And what impact did it have on the club and the fans? Yeah, actually, it was before our times. It was another management at the time, but it was not because of the management. Uh -huh. It was due to financial reasons, and uh, after it happened, the federation admitted that they made a mistake. Actually, so but <laughs> there was nothing to do. It was already in the second league, three seasons. Uh, I remember I was always going to the stadium, the old stadium at that time, because we we all felt that we, this is the times when you have to support the club even more, you know, because. We, we are not with the club only because it's in the first league, but we are with yeah. the club even in the second league. And, and uh, then it was a big disappointment when we couldn't come back in the first year. Then it was a disaster when we couldn't come back in the second year. You know, then we came back in the third year. And um, yeah, it was, it was, you know, it even gave, we always say that if something which doesn't kill you makes you stronger, yeah. you know, so actually this is, it made us even stronger, I think. So that's really good. And speaking about that, that following year, uh, or the year that you you know you retired the number twelve shirt, is yeah. that, that correct? And um, and what led you to come to that decision, and what what was the reaction from the fan base when you when yeah. you made that decision to retire the number twelve? Well, the fans are of 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 great importance for this club. Well, all the clubs are about the fans, but this club has fans, and uh, you know, actually, as I said, two million people is a big number, and. Uh, I remember there were times when the Ultras didn't come to the stadium, to this new stadium, because there's this entry system, so-called the vein scanner, so you have to put your hand there and it recognizes your veins, and then you, wow. you are identified 100%. <laughs> and they, they say that they don't want it. And we said, why? This is not criminalistic, because if I ask for fingerprints, like in the old Atletico Madrid Stadium, yeah. you know, the Ultras could go in with fingerprints, I understand you, but this is, I cannot do anything with your yeah. vein map, you know? Well, they said, no, we are not coming. And the first uh, three years, the stadium opened, they did not come. They stayed outside. The wow. Ultras, you know. And then uh, we came to an agreement with them, and they, they came back, and now there is peace and love. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, they are, they are fantastic. I mean, these guys really, really love the club. Uh, this is their life. They are preparing the choreography and everything yeah. before the games, you know. So they really, I think that... It's about it's about supporters, you know. Of course, it's about supporters, I and mean, you have to you have to concentrate on this. Yeah, I mean, when you were uh, two years later, obviously the club was uh, was promoted. Yeah. Uh, how much of a relief was it to get back up so quickly, and did, did it lead to any changes within the club to avoid a repeat of? of well, actually, uh, you know, financial when, problems? when we came when we came here, we we said that okay, we have to change some things. As uh, the president is from the politics and from the business life, we said we all believe in numbers. And we had to sit down first, and we said, we said, okay, we we have to 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 see what what's the problem that we are facing. Yeah. And then uh, we worked with Ernst and Young, you know, and they 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 gave us the numbers, showed us everything, you know, what's happening, and then we said, oh my God. And uh, imagine <laughs> what the, the situation which was here. For example, yeah. I was I was uh, yeah uh, chosen CEO of the club, uh, the end of March in 2011, and at that time. The players, the administration workers, nobody got salary for four and a half months. The bills were not paid, you know, the electricity, the gas, and nothing. Wow. And so we bought back the club for one euro plus that. <laughs> and, and I was sitting with the president, yeah. you know, and we said, well, what can we do now? And we had to bring money from home, you know, wow. to give salary yeah. to the people and to the players, you know, and, and, and pay the bills and everything. And uh, it was hard times, to be honest. Yeah. And then we said that okay, we have to we have to consider it as a business, and 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 I know that supporters hate it when I say that it, you have to consider it as a brand because they say okay, it's a brand for you, for us it's our life, not for yeah. me, it's our life, my my life as well. <laughs> but if I want the club to exist, then we have to consider it as a business, course, you know, yeah. and we have to we have to 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 do just like in any any other businesses. And we said that the most important is to have a 
a stable financial background and and we have it now even with the stadium you know there's an operator as i said and uh, we have a very good contract with the operator so normally we get uh, a fixed amount with the bank guarantee every year nice plus a certain percentage yeah, yeah. of the profit but i can count on this fixed amount for sure you know yeah. I mean, this is very good we have big sponsors we have like the group of all it's called the group of arena which is naming style uh naming right uh, the sponsor french insurance company we have a 10-year deal with nike a skip sponsor yeah. we have our our, our uh, kids changed every second year the home and every second in the years in between yeah. the way kids and uh, like telecom is a big sponsor the shirt sponsor so actually i can say that the the, the background is stable yeah. it's it's financially sustainable and that's that's, that's the most important yeah you know? i mean it, as a ceo you, you must be delighted to be able to sit back and go okay everything is fine. <laughs> everything is uh for the for the moment is um you know, comfortable and, and it's yeah, yeah, we are. We a lot are. of you off your head. Um, but it's, this is just a, a question uh, for us mainly. But what is your greatest moment as, as a fan, or you know, as a yeah. as a CEO of this club? You know, yeah. what what moment stood out to you as you know, just that you know, you, you close your eyes and you're you're there, kind of kind of. Yeah. there are some moments like this. Actually, there was the last game in the last derby in the old stadium <laughs> uh, when we won with a goal in the ninety third minute. <laughs> That was something incredible against Lipesh. Um Then we had, well, the first game here in the stadium against Chelsea. That was something something special for us. And actually, we won the cup now uh, the last recent years, three times in a row. And uh, each and every time here in the stadium, because this is the, 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 the site of the yeah. cup final always, which is incredible. Uh, yeah, a lot of lot of fantastic moments as as a supporter as well. I remember my father. He always told me that when I, when I took this job, he was still alive, and he told me, "Look, do it, do it the way that it will be over once one day. Yeah. You know, it doesn't last for 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 life for good. Mm -hmm. And when when you're not CEO anymore, you can sit back. Yeah, with the supporters, and, you know, and yeah, this is the way you have it. to work because otherwise <laughs> yeah. they kill you. <laughs> and that's, yeah. it. that's no, it. that's that's really really good. Um, just a uh, uh, obviously last year at the Europa League qualifier against uh, Maccabi Tel Aviv, the club uh, honoured yeah. uh, Istvan Toth, a former player and hero of the Holocaust era, by helping hundreds yeah. of Jews uh, escape. Nazi custody and death and how did you feel this affected the fight against anti-semitism in football and, and are there any other initiatives that the club have yeah. to help battle against this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we used to have I, I, I have to admit we used to have issues with this before you know and, and uh, on, on, on the, in the stadiums there was there was some, some, some racism sometimes you know and, and we said that this is not the way this is not the way we are a big club you know and we have to educate yeah. people yeah, and and this is as I said, it's not only an opportunity but a responsibility as well. And uh, and I was very very proud after this game because there was not one bad word from our from our supporters. You know, everybody was was really supporting the team, and nobody cared about if we are playing Maccabi Tel Aviv or we are playing Bayern Munich. Or it's, in, it's it's not important. Yeah. I mean, and this is I remember there was a time when we had I don't know like four different religions in the dressing room. Yeah, you know, yeah. and it, it sport is about this. I mean, you don't have to yeah. to to consider other people based on the color no. of their skin or the religion or whatever. And it's what and, they do. With the ball at the end yeah, of the yeah, day. Yeah, we were very proud because actually we were we we for we had a, an anti-racism campaign mm -hmm. in Ferenc Aros. No, we had three actually, and for the first one we got the 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 fair play award of the Hungarian uh, Olympic Committee. So actually, which is which is really we, we were the first ones to set an example in wow. this in this domain, yeah. and this was very we were very proud involving the 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 supporters and everything. So I think that that. Here I can say that that we are we are really like uh, we should have been like twenty years ago. Yeah. Now we are we are we are good and yeah. we are we are happy with that. Yeah, it's so, it's so, it's it's so important. Yeah, it is. I mean, there's so many clubs across the world, yeah. you know, trying to make a, a big difference uh, yeah. towards anti-Semitism. And you, you know, me personally, I I I hate to see it. Yeah. You know, it doesn't belong. Like we said before, some things just don't belong in, in yeah, football. Absolutely. Um, but finally, the, the the Albert Florian Foundation, it was founded in 2010. Uh, but what was the main aim of the foundation? And can you tell us some of the work that it's done? Yeah, of course. Uh, well, Albert Florian Foundation, Albert Florian is a big legend of the club. 
he's 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 really probably the biggest. I have known <laughs> him very well yeah. from from my my being young, and and he was a fantastic person. He yeah. was really a, not only a fantastic player, but he was a very 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 good person. And when he passed away, uh, we decided to 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 keep his memories, you know, and to keep him with us every day. And this is how his son is and his daughter. They are in the, in the foundation yeah, actually, okay. and this foundation is 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 within the club, and uh, they are they are helping those talented football players, young players, so not only football players, mm -hmm. other other sports as well, who who have not who doesn't who don't have the the financial background in their families to 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 do sports, you know, yeah. and they are. They are helping them. And this is the, the basic idea about this foundation. And I think it's, it's working very, very well. Well, you've taken the time to show us around the stadium and uh, we appreciate the time that you've given yeah, us. So thank you very, you much. very much. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Tyler Ross, we, uh, we appreciate it. And uh, thank you very much. I thank you very much. It's my pleasure.